we call them. It's the Ivan Williams. How you doing, Ivan? I'm fine. <laughs> fine with that face, right? Get them to come to the basement, you know, talk about some of that stuff. So, yeah, it was my pleasure, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much, really. An honor. You know, and uh, now you probably, I don't know, have you been playing as long as me? I've been playing since I was about 15. And I'm 51 now, so you playing a little longer? I've been playing since 1972. 1972? Yeah. Um, so that means I've been playing for 41 years. Wow. What was, your, what was your first base? You know, I don't remember what it is. You remember what? Just a stick of plywood and some strings on? Yeah, something my mother brought me at the uh, music store. I don't remember. Uh, I don't even remember what happened to it. But I still have my second base from 1972. Don't know what kind it is because I... Um, so speaking of music man, uh, what I did was I took it, I cut the headstock. It, it used to be four by one, four, okay. four pegs on one side. Well, I cut my headstock and put uh, the G-string on this side mm -hmm. so I could have me a little music man. And, ah. and I, st I still got that bass, man. From really? 19, like I said, from 1975. Well, at least you got, you got still a little piece of your memorabilia. I don't got my, my bass. I had like this Magnum, one of my old Magnums, and uh, I had a uh, my first Fender Jazz, which I, you know, sold a long time ago. What was your, I know you had a Fender Jazz, but what was your first Fender Jazz? Believe it or not, I got my first Fender Jazz uh, about six years ago. It was uh, Marcus oh. Miller, American made Marcus Miller. Okay. I love that bass. And, uh, fell on hard times. And had, uh, I had to sell everything. My uh, bass, my upright, uh, my uh, studio. We've everything, all been there. I, everything was for sale, and I still got evicted, bro. Hey, we all, we've all been there. That was in Cleveland. I got evicted and had to come move to Detroit. Okay. And it was the best. You know what? You got to see the blessings in Cleveland. Yeah, right. That uh, getting kicked out of Cleveland, Ohio, was the best thing to happen to me. You know, you know what I'm mean? saying? And, and, and I'm back home in Detroit meeting so many musicians, you know, I know a few musicians there, but I meet so many musicians here, even in this music store, there's a guy who make bass, his name is Sean May, even had him on the show, you know, so I, I done met a whole bunch of musicians, I'm playing every Sunday at church, 
freelancing gigs, so getting kicked out of Cleveland was the best thing to happen to you. Well, you know, you know, uh, those things, man, you know, um, I mean, they, they give you character to make you man. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you go through those things. Man is rough. And you know, you know, you know what kills me about that, Ivan? It don't get it easier, does it? <laughs> no, no. No, you gotta stay strong. You can't, you can't relax, man. Stay strong, you know? to build this organization one day just came to you or you know, and you and Reginald Candy I wanted to mention him too um well we didn't build an organization in fact I almost like to say we don't have anything to do with the Detroit bass players on Facebook see that's that's a whole different thing Detroit bass players on Facebook is founded by Craig Sconey and uh, he, he was partnered up with a guy named Kerry Lacey. And that's how they got all of these bass players to start joining the group Detroit Bass Players on fa Facebook, which is a great resource for a uh, uh, great resource for, for bass communication, bass socialization, or whatever you want to call it. Now, me, I heard about a Ralphie Armstrong show. That was live on TV. Right, I've seen it. From the YouTube channel. And, um... Catch episodes on YouTube. And, um... And I said, I'm gonna go check out Ralphie. And me and Reginald Canty went to go check out Ralph Armstrong. Live on E Detroit, where he used to have a live show. And, um... I took my camera and I filmed pieces of it. I filmed, uh... Some, some of the bass players that came in there. And when I start filming it, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna film, I'm gonna try to get an interview with every, every bass player in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? So that's how my thing started, which you can find my stuff on youtube.com slash Ivan Williams. You'll see a lot of interviews with Detroit's bass players, including yourself. You know Some from out of town, you did one on uh, Marcus Miller. And I, I got Marcus Miller. Al Turner, Giovanni Collier, all of these guys from Detroit or had something to do with Detroit. Marcus Miller was in Detroit. That's good enough for me. Marcus Miller got a song called Detroit. Called Detroit, yeah. So that's good enough for me. Lamont Johnson, one of the baddest dudes to come out of Detroit. Uh, Lamont uh, Johnson. Kern Brandy, Lady Gaga, bass player, the music director, music director for Beyonce, uh, Neo, uh, you name it. Kern Brandy. And I can just mention that one, one, one time, just for just a second. There are a countless number of music directors, musical directors, and being bass player. Yes. I mean, this is you know, something about us. About right, the number one out of Detroit is uh, Mike Harrington. He used to be the music director for Sean Harrington. I mean, Sean Kingston. He's Jamaican. Dude. I haven't got my guarantee yet, but I'm just saying that's another music guy. But yeah, I got a ton of bass players, man, from the little guy to. I, I've done over 100 interviews. And uh, I got a 10,000 more to go. I, I'm never going to achieve my goal, but I'm, I'm going to have fun trying to do an interview with every single last bass player. But if you just started playing, Deluxe, right? Jazz. You like them jazz? You like that neck, that small neck? Yeah, I love uh, I love the jazz. Uh, I like how it sounds, you know what I'm saying? You want me to come off this uh, sc Excuse the noise, man. They're really, I don't know, a little while ago, man, we was all right, man. We had barely anybody in here, but now they just cranking out here, and I hope this is coming through. I mean, they're really cranking out here. I can't, I can't really tell them to be quiet because it's a music store. So, you know. Is it, is it, uh, you got compression on your mic? Oh, it's compression. Yeah, that's compression. But probably when we ain't talking, it's probably. Uh, okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. But yeah, man, the thing that what I like about the jazz is uh, when it's, the action is set low, I like the, when I, when I fuck hard. I'm like a
behind the gym. Now there's an annual thing that's been um, going on with these Detroit bass players. It started last year. It's going to happen again this year. August 3rd, uh, a bunch of us are going to get together at the Motown Museum, take a little picture, have drinks and stuff like that, and uh, take a tour of the Motown Museum. And uh, you want to tell us a little about that? Well, again, that's uh, a Craig Stoney thing. Uh, I'm coming, you know, I, I film everything, so I'm coming to film it. And I got to figure out how I'm going to uh, get in the picture and film it at the same time. I ain't figured that out yet, but are you going to be there? Oh, yeah. I'm glad I'm there. Okay, well, this is the third annual. This is the third one. This is the third one, okay. Yeah, when Craig started the Facebook, I mean, Detroit bass players on Facebook. Um, it was just a few members, and then it grew to like 500. And, and then I said, man, they ought to take a picture. And, and lo and behold, they took a picture two years ago. And then last year, uh, a whole bunch more bass players showed up. I think it was like a thousand or something. There was so many bass players that it actually got uh, the picture got submitted to Bass Player Magazine. Player Magazine. Yeah, and that, that was awesome. I didn't make either one of those. You didn't? No. But this third one, like I say, August 3rd, I'm going to be there. And anybody, if, if, if you had this on before uh, August 3rd, August 3rd, anybody 2013. Play, anybody play bass? Even if you just started. Even if you got a bass guitar, if you got one, come on out to the Motown Museum about, about 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock because the photo is going to be taken exactly at 12. You know, so, so you got to get there because there's going to be a lot of bass players and it's right in front of the Motown Museum slash his Bill Studio, which uh, has a sentimental, the, 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 the building has sentimental value to me because one of the great producers out of there, Ivy Joe Hunter, who I used to work with, who I used to play bass for, for Motown, you know. So that's I, that's my connection to Motown, is I played for a uh, great producer named Ivy Joe Hunter, did some records with him back in the 70s. Uh, so I, I can't wait to get there. But it's going to be beautiful, but not... The whole day is actually called Detroit Bass Day. After the photo shoot, directly after it, at 1 o'clock, Kern Brantley, Lady Gaga's bass player in front of Detroit, he's holding it. It's called the Bass Day. I forget where it's being held at, you can find out. But he's holding a base day thing where it's a J J James Jameson tribute. Okay. Where a few bass players are going to be playing songs and James Jameson play bass on like uh, uh, Kerr's going to play, William Pope's going to play, Emily Rogers is going to play, Reginald Cantley, my partner, who are in the basement, Detroit bass players in the basement here. Appreciate the bass. Yeah, just you know, just come on out and hang out. You're gonna see some great bass players, uh, and some big time, some heavy hitters. And stuff. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. We can get together and do that. You're gonna be there, right? Oh yeah. Hey, man, look, I, I, I already already put in the day at work. If I have to work that day, I'm, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thing. Just come because I want to be part of that. I want to be part of what? the brotherhood, brotherhood of bass players. It's probably gonna be really hot that day too. I hope so. I hope it ain't raining, man. It's, it's like every day it rains now, you know, yeah. like we in Seattle or something.
like this or not, man. Okay. It, it just, it don't, it ain't, it, it don't feel good. It don't feel good. <laughs> right. It ain't, it don't take, feel Take into consideration it is from, it's out of Indonesia and it's a, a lowercase base. You know? Right. It so this is for the, the break-in people. Right. It don't feel good to me. Okay. Now, I picked up Ibanez's for the same price. Right. They feel good. Okay. You know? But I don't want an Ibanez, man. I want one of these, man. So I don't know what I got to do to make it feel good. Maybe put some new strings on it. Yeah, nice calibration. Somebody is learning something and they're all over the bass guitar. Like if the line went like, just for example, you see how how many different positions I am? Why are you going all over the neck to play something that's all in one position? Right there. You don't have to play all over the place. I mean, unless it, unless it calls for you to do something. You know, if it calls for, you know, that extra stuff, but... And you but, see that a lot? Yeah, I see, you look on YouTube and see somebody, you know how everybody and their mama got a YouTube video of them playing a song. Mm -hmm. For example, one song is, uh, one song is called Spang by Chick Corea. I see guys, they all over the net, dude. <laughs> 
Like, why are you all over the neck? This, the song is in one spot. Look, right here. trying to look flashy or no I think when they learning it mm -hmm. they don't think about what you call uh, economy of motion um, mm -hmm. just staying in position everything everything is in one position so that's what I see that's one of the biggest mistakes I see with but it ain't just newbies this is mm -hmm. you look at somebody they be all over the place when they don't have to be but mm -hmm. but again can you call that a mistake right you know what I'm saying you well, know. well, you know, something I know is maybe you, you, you like to speak on, um, uh, hey, everybody likes to pop, everybody likes the funky licks and everything like that, but I know people that can barely riff, mm -hmm. they can, because they pop all the time, mm -hmm. you know, to actually play a blues uh, a line, doo -doo 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 -doo, or the, or the, you know, um, rock and roll line, I mean, they can't barely do it. And I'm like, you know, don't you use your fingers and all, you know, and they try to thump it. You know, they don't they don't always sound sound good, you know. So I'm like, you know, you know both ways is pretty good, man. And I learned the first way before I ever got into the funk. So Yeah, um I don't know. As an instructor I've learned to to each his own, you know. Mm -hmm. One thing, I another pet peeve. I can't stand somebody just uh, But Well, James Jameson. Hey, we doing the tribute, <laughs> and he got his body of work is uh, massive. You know, but like I said, as an instructor, I'm sure it's an English teacher that can't stand rap. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But that rap is making slang money. diction and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. But yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I, I think you should have a, a whole variety, popping, regular standard, pluck. Uh, I haven't really got into it, but uh, tapping. tapping. <laughs> Pretty good. That's the only thing I know how to. Man, that's good enough. Cause I ain't done nothing to tapping. Uh, yeah, so. Check it out, see what it feels like. It, uh, what other styles is the play? Palm um, muted? Now, let's go press it. Now, have you got into, uh, I do it sometimes, I've been trying to do it for a while, I still haven't mastered it. Uh, the um, Actually plucking the um, uh, pick pick plucking with your finger going up and down yeah right. i do um uh, I, I i i you know i studied under uh, uh victor wooten oh Stuart okay Ham, mike manring studied under gerald veasley anthony wellington brian bromberg uh well, when i studied under victor he was mentioning stuff and he also has a video of it. he was mentioning uh thumb down thumb up Pluck, pluck, uh, first finger pluck, second finger pluck, so it goes like this. And um, I know that if you want to get good at something that's different, you know, different type of technique, that you got to spend hours. Listen to me. If you want to get good at different techniques, you got to spend hours. Hours. Train your hands. Yeah, and mind. that's what Victor told me. He's like, I did it for hours. I don't, I can't do that. I ain't got, t you know, I'm too lazy or I don't have the discipline to do it. So I do like 
thumb down, thumb up. So I get. So I can do that right there. Or uh, sometimes I do uh, thump, hammer, hammer. Uh, so yeah. This is kind of quadruple. So yeah, that's the way I do it. You know. So it's, it's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Depends on uh, what you into. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, Ivan, I want to thank you for coming out, man. I really appreciate. We finally, we've been playing this a while. We finally got together. We finally got this in the, in, the, in the bag here, and I really appreciate it, man. And uh, no, I appreciate. It. I can't. I can't wait to get on your show, man. You got all them subscribers and stuff. I'll just let you know that. Uh, people come to my channel and they watch the interview that I did with you. Uh -huh. And every everybody that makes a comment has nothing but good things to say about you. So, so uh, I'm proud to come and, and get on your channel, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to it. Let me know when it's gonna be on there so I can go check it out. I will. And, and uh, uh, see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Okay, man. So I appreciate. It. Well, as you, as you say to us when we're on your channel, play us out, bro. Oh, uh, okay. Who do I know how to play? On the sub bass. On the sub break. Okay, so, uh... Now, now, now you can't figure out what to play. <laughs> yeah, it's like...